Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome to Mountain Made Creations. I am doing something a little bit different today. I'm using StreamYard to stream live. Um, and I'm just going to make sure that I can see this so that I can keep up with your comments. Because if you don't give access to StreamYard to um, post your name, I won't be able to see who's posting comments. But um, anywho, that's okay. I can answer your questions later if you have any questions. I just want to be able to um, see all the comments. So if you're commenting and I am not getting back to you, I'm super sorry. <laughs> it's just because I can't see comments. And this is a whole new way to um, do this video. So we're just trying this out. Um, I have used StreamYard before, but I'm hoping to do a few things that... Um, are different and different ways for me to go live in various places. So right now I'm just starting out with StreamYard. We're going to use this. We're going to go for it. See how it goes. Let me know in the comments if you're catching this live. Um, and I'm sorry if I don't answer your comments. It's only because I can't see them. So for right now, I don't see comments. But if you comment, I will let you know if I see it. So if not, I will go back and answer any questions you might have. So what we're doing today is and by the way welcome to mountain made creations um i'm super excited to be here with you guys it's been a couple weeks i've been super busy getting ready for three back-to-back -back pretty large events coming up starting on um april 27th so we've been doing that i've had allergies i missed a day of work it's just been one thing after another but it's been great um today was an awesome um, morning at church with my mom and my niece and now we're going to create some things and um, then I'm going to hop off of here and go check out my birds. So um, let's get started. What we're going to be doing first is I'm going to be making a photo slate. I am now offering photo, um, photo gifts, customizable photo gifts. And um, I started last year with ornaments and that turned out super good. So um, let me turn this down a little bit. So. Um, that worked out really well. People were loving those ornaments. So what we're doing now is this is a five by five um, slate that you sublimate on. And that's how I'm doing the sublimation. And it's just a clear white um, slate. And it has to have this coating, poly coating, to be able to sublimate on. And then it has the um, slate back. And then it comes with the little stands. Um, let me just put this in here so it stands up on its own these are so so cool um the pictures are amazing when they're put on here they're super shiny and i just love the outcome of them i think that anytime you can do a gift that is a photo or something that they can remember that it's always going to be amazing so um anyway i just think that's an awesome gift and we have mother's day coming up and so i just think it's a good good gift um, and it means something. So you're going to need some parchment paper, a photo slate made for sublimation, um, heat protectant gloves, your, um, I'm using the Cricut heat heating mat to put the slate on once I get it out and a heat press. And I don't believe that you can use your Cricut heat press with these slates because it has to have medium pressure and it's for 420 seconds, which is seven minutes. So you don't want to stand there and hold a lot of pressure on your easy press for seven minutes i don't think you can try it but i'm not sure it would work out so we're going to put this on 390 degrees which i've had it heating up and it's ready to go for so seven minutes which is 420 seconds and um, medium pressure so i just did the pressure i have the pressure knob on that heat press and um when i could finally close it that's about where i left it at so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over this with the lint roller to make sure that there's nothing on here that would um, actually, I'm going to clean this with alcohol and let it dry for a minute while I am cutting out my picture. You're going to love this picture. Um, it's, um, it's so cute. So I'm just going to put a little bit of alcohol on a um, microfiber towel and I'm going to wipe this off really good. I'm going to try not to wipe it where the, tag is because I don't want to scratch it and I'm going to let this air dry for a few minutes but I want to make sure there's no dust or particles on that so I'm going to get this parchment paper out because you're going to want to put a piece of parchment paper you're going to put the slate on top of a piece of parchment paper and then you're going to put another piece 
on top of that. You want to protect your heat press um, from, from any blowout of the color. All right, so I'm going to be putting this adorable little picture and I printed these off um, on sublimation paper with sublimation ink. I have the Epson F170 and I absolutely love it. Um, it was so easy to set up. I didn't have to change any of the settings, the color settings or any of that. That's why I didn't want to get a printer that you had to convert because I didn't know what the settings you know, what all the settings were that I needed to have the colors at. And with a sublimation printer that's made for sublimation, it comes already ready for you to go. So I'm going to put my parchment paper down here. I'm going to place the picture and it is mirrored. Um, you'll make sure you want to mirror it. And also there's a setting when you go to print that it's either rigid or textile. Textile is for anything fabric rigid is for anything else. So that's what I'm putting that on. So now I'm just going to take this and put it on top of the picture and make sure it has dried off. We'll just dry it for a minute. I just want to make sure that it's good and dry. So you guys let me know, comment, let me know someone's on here. I want to see if I can see the um, comments. And even if you don't register StreamYard, it's fine. You can still comment. I just won't be able to see who you are, but I can go back and see it. So I'm just lining this up. I'm making sure that the whole picture is on the slate um, because you don't want to have any white showing on the slate where you missed it. So I'm just, and I, the slate is five and a half by five and a half. And so what I did was I printed the picture. Um, I made a square in Silhouette Studio uh, 5.2. And then I put the picture inside that square, resized it, cropped it, and then printed it. So the picture is actually 5.2. And so that's what we're going with. And I bet you I don't have my heat tape down here. Hang on, you guys. I do have a roll of it. All right, you know what? Let me just use this. I left my regular heat tape upstairs. So let me put this in here. Sorry about that, guys. I thought I had it everything. So you'll need heat resistant tape to do this. And I have, um, this is Cricut brand. I like the other brand because it's skinnier, but this, is, this will work just fine. And it's, I don't know if it's going to, yeah, I'm just winging it with this so I can just get enough tape out to tape that down. So I'm going to just tape the slate to the picture paper, and then I'm going to put it on the press and we're going to heat it um, just like it is, meaning normally when you do sublimation, like when I do the earrings, I lay the paper side of the print. I'll show you. I can't hardly explain it <laughs> without showing you. It's kind of crazy. All right. So basically when I would normally sublimate anything else, it would be like this on the, on the press with the paper up this side needs to be up when you're doing slate. So I'm going to put it down just like this. And this is how it's going to go right on the um, press, just like this. And then I'm going to put a piece of parchment paper over top of that. And I'm hoping that that tape doesn't show through, but we'll see. So I'm just going to take this just like this. Okay. And I'm going to put it on the heat press. Then I'm going to put another piece of parchment paper over top of it. Okay. And then I'm just going to put this over it. And then I'm going to close it and it's going to count down to 420 seconds. All right. So while that is going, we will go over some other items that I wanted to show you. Um, one thing about, um, well, let me get this ornament ready. This is a glass ornament and one side is frosted and then the other side is clear. So when you sublimate on this, it's not going to have the white background like you see here. It's going to just be clear. It's going to have the picture on it, but it's going to be clear. So what I'm going to do is get this ready to roll while that's heating and I have a picture of 
my guineas that we're going to test it out on. I had already tested these, but I did not bring them down here to show you those, but we're going to make this one. And I know ornaments are out right now because Christmas is a long ways away, but that's okay. So when you're doing the glass, you don't want to um, mirror it because it's going to be on the, it's, it's glass. So it's going to sublimate right on it. So what I'm going to do is sit this on the photo paper and this is three and a half inches. So I did my circle at 3.7. So since it's not mirrored, I'm going to lay this right over top of the frosted part is going to be against the photo. And then you'll see in a minute that you'll be able to see this picture on the clear side beautifully. And y'all, these are so cute. They're different because they're not, it doesn't have a white background. So it almost gives it a effect of not really metallic, but it's different than having a white background. So I'm just taping this down and I'll pick it up and show you what I mean. So as you can see, you can see how the picture is going to look when we get it pressed. So, and I'm going to lay it like I normally do with the paper side facing up. And so I'm just going to fold this parchment paper over top of it. And I'm going to sit this out of the way because we're going to put that in the heat press when that gets done. Now that is you um, heat the glass ornaments for 360 to 375 degrees for 120 seconds medium pressure. Do not mirror. So I think I did mine for 375. I'm pretty sure. I don't think I wrote down what I did it on. But anyway, we're going to go with that um, and see how that works. Another thing that I have decided to start making is signs for my events. Now, most of my events are outside, so the wind plays a big factor in a lot of things as far as everything blowing down. So I've decided to make signs out of aluminum since I already have them. Um, I went ahead and pressed some small signs for these are for my earrings and they have easels um these little easels right here whoops sorry about that these little easels will hold my signs up and then i won't have to worry about them blowing down um, so i just decided to do that with the the earrings i did one for the bookmarks i like to have everything at my booth priced because um, I know that if I'm shopping in someone's booth, I don't want to have to ask them what something costs every time. So that's why um, I made these signs. I want my prices visual. I want everybody to know what everything costs. So there's no question about it. So this is the um, custom photo gifts. And now I have one more to make that I did not get to make. And that was for the slates since I have slates now. Um, I went ahead and printed another earring one and one for the photo slate. So I'm going to cut these out. We're going to do a couple of those as well. These are super easy to make. Um, I did make some bigger ones for the custom panels that I have. I made sure that I had everything listed. I have the aluminum photo panels that are white background and the aluminum photo panels that are silver background. The silver makes the metallic look. So I printed that on a large piece of aluminum that was made for sublimation. It has the white on it when you sublimate on it. And these I can actually hang up and I don't have to worry about the wind blowing these over. So these are all my prices that they'll be able to see as soon as they come in my booth. I also have one for payments accepted so that they can pay and they know they can scan the QR code. They know that um, I take PayPal, Venmo. I also have a card swiper that I take to all my events to um, take credit card payments and of course cash, but th I thought this would be good. It's on metal as well. It doesn't have the holes in it. I'm not sure if I'll put holes in this one or put an easel on it. Um, I may have to get Wayne to put me a hole on this one. I ordered these blanks off of Etsy and I didn't get holes in this one like I did this one. It has a hole in the top and the bottom, but um, these came from Etsy. So it's just a good way to advertise your prices if you do craft events. I just thought it was something different something that I don't have to worry about blowing over every time the wind blows and all that. And so I'm going to go ahead and make these. And if I can find my panels, I have everything 
a mess in my craft room right now because I'm trying to box up the items that are priced, that are tagged, and all that good stuff. So <laughs> I'm trying to find out where all my stuff is. So um, yeah. Anyway, let me see if they're right here. Hold on, you guys. I don't know what I did with them. We may not be able to make those because I am not even sure where they are at this moment. But I'm actually trying to um, organize a little bit better. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Let me see Pete's sake, y'all. Well, we may not be able to make those because I don't know what in the world I have done with my um, aluminum panels. Like I said, it's a mess right now where I'm trying to box everything up and get everything tagged. So we may just have to not make these today. Um, I also wanted to show you some of the stud earrings that I've made. Um, the studs are really cute. I am loving these. Um, we've got the little... Um, the little cows. These are a little bit bigger than those other ones I had. The other ones I had were teeny tiny, but these are super cute. And then we have the leopard studs there. So, okay, let's get this out. And you want to be careful um, not to move the ink, the ink paper. You make sure you don't you don't want to move the paper that has the ink on it around too much while it's hot because you can cause ghosting. So let's take this off and see what this did. Oh my goodness, y'all. This is so cute. And I'm telling you, make sure you wear your protective heat protective gloves because these are, like I said, 400 or whatever, 390 degrees, and it's been sitting there for um, seven minutes, so it's going to be super hot. Y'all, look how cute that is. Oh my goodness, you guys. This is so, so cute. Um, this is a picture taken in Australia. My little nephew, um, his name is Ty. It's not, he's not the cutest little thing you've ever seen, but this turned out so good, you guys. I think that this is just beautiful. I love the, the sort of darker tones of it. Um, I may should have lightened it a little bit, but I kind of like that effect of it. A lot of times when you sublimate photos, it comes out a little bit darker, but I think it came out super cute. So I'm going to put this over here to um, cool off. And then I am... We're going to go ahead and make the glass ornament and then we'll be done because I'm sure that those um, panels will show up as soon as I get done. I just can't uh, find them. Like I said, it's a mess in here where I'm trying to pack everything up. Okay, so I'm going to change my heat settings for this glass ornament and we're going to put it on 375 for 120 seconds. For 120 seconds, you guys. Okay. I'm going to let that cool down to 375 degrees to put up it before I put the ornament on there. So I have the ornament. It's taped down. It's not mirrored. And then it's going to go in the press with the paper side up. I'm putting it inside this parchment paper and I'm going to put the parchment paper over top of it. We're going to put that right in the heat press for 120 seconds with medium pressure. Now, I think I need to adjust the pressure more because with the um, slate, it was a lot thicker and this is a lot thinner. So I may have to adjust that pressure a little bit more once I get it done. And that's driving me crazy that I can't find my, 
Oh, panels. Oh my gosh. Anyway, it's okay. You guys have seen me make these before, but I do think that these are a really good way to advertise your prices at these events. If you guys are crafters and you do vendor events, I just think these are something different and it shows your work also. So um, let me know if you are a crafter and you sell your items at shows because it's just good to see who all else is doing it. And is this any interest to you? I also did put my logo down here at the bottom as I was doing these. I just, I don't know. I just think it gives it a more personable look than just a piece of paper or a sticker or something. I just like these better. And I like, you know, I like everything organized and everything priced. So I don't want people to have to say, how much is this? How much is that? Okay, we're at 374. I'm going to go ahead and put this in just like this, the paper side up. And I think that pressure is good. It seemed pretty firm. Um, anyway, so if you have any questions at all, comment them. Let me know. I will go back and check comments um, later after this live is done. And if you don't mind, and you find that it's different me using StreamYard to stream live with you guys, let me know what you think about that. Do you think it's better or worse? Um, it's still live. It's just I'm using them to go through to stream to Facebook. One of the things I'm trying to do is to, um, I had a few people on YouTube say that when they were watching it, and I'm assuming they were watching the videos on their TV, they said it looked really, really small, and they couldn't hardly see what I was holding up. So I'm going to see if this helps that any going through StreamYard. I may try to do a couple of lives um, just in YouTube to see if it makes a difference. I'm hoping that it is a bigger picture than just that square on Facebook. So we'll see how that works. That's one of the reasons I wanted to try it because I try to accommodate you guys. You know, if you can't see what I'm doing, then it's there's no point in doing it. <laughs> so anyway, um, anywho, so that is what we were doing today i am also working on garden flags i'm still studying i'm still working on it because the garden flags are bigger than what my printer will print so you have to piece them together i've done that i haven't actually pressed it yet i'm not sure if the seams are going to show up or or not so i'm still working on that and once i get that down pat i will come live and we'll go over and try that and see how that works out um but anyway i'm hoping that that's going to work out because i love garden flags so it would be kind of neat to make my own now the place i've been getting my sublimation blanks johnson plastics plus does not carry garden flags i don't think or they carry one-sided and i want it two-sided so we'll see Okay, let's see how this turned out. And please wear um, heat protectant gloves because this stuff is super hot and it will burn you. All right, you guys. Okay. Oh my gosh, y'all, this is so cute. All right, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this because like I said, it is clear. So there's the back of it. That's like the frosted. And then this is the clear part. Now I'm going to put a piece of paper behind it so you can see what the picture looks like and just see the difference. But y'all, it is so pretty. Now that is what it looks like without the paper. Okay. Um, it is so pretty. I think it's super pretty. It's super shiny. Um, it's just clear, so it's not going to have that, you know, what the white background look. So that's what it looks like if you put white behind it. So I may try some glass if they have any that has the white on it, but these are just the clear glass. And I think they're just something different and unique about them, even though um, I think if you had these hanging in your Christmas tree with like a light behind it, how pretty would that look, you guys? I think these are going to be really pretty on your Christmas tree. So that is it for today guys it's been um super fun hanging out with you again it's been so long since i've been on here i think it's been two weeks and i hate going that long but it's been crazy and y'all this slate 
is absolutely stunning. I mean, I think that this is so, so pretty. I love the colors. Um, I love the kind of darkness to it. I think it just gives it a pretty, pretty tone. And this one is going to be at my events. If you want to come out and see what I have, check them out. Um, but this one is going to eventually be going to Australia. So I'm going to be using this as a um, sample at my shows. So M April 27th is the Vinton Dogwood Festival, if you're local. And then we have, and that's in two weeks. Then we have the weekend after that, which is May 4th at the Berglund Center. And then May 11th, the day before Mother's Day at Emerson Creek Pottery. So you guys come out and see me. I would love to see you guys. If, you, if you're interested in being a vendor, I do know that the May 4th and probably the May 11th is still taking vendors. I'm not sure about the May 11th one, but I know the Berglund Center is, and I posted that on the page, but I can post it again. So um, let's do a devotional and then we'll be done. All right, you guys, it's been so great being on here with you today. Today is the 14th, my little niece, Josie's birthday. She is precious. I'll have to post a picture of her in the group because she was so precious yesterday at her party. Okay, it says, prayer is essential. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. That's Mark 135. Some of God's children are, too, are just too busy, even if you are extremely busy in the service of the Lord, but are not supported by the power of faithful prayer while you work, you run the risk of, you run the risk of complete breakdown and burnout of your spiritual life. You cannot fulfill your spiritual duty without prayer. Prayer is the encouragement and inspiration for, for Christian service. It gives sincerity to everything that you embark on in the Master's name and gives you a deep satisfaction that you cannot get from any other source. Father, through your favor, may I experience more comfort in times of adversity, more sorrow over sin, more joy in my labors. May I be inspired by prayer and pursue your example diligently. Amen. So, you guys prayer is powerful. So if you need me to pray for you, you let me know and I would be happy to do that. It helps even if you're stressed out, you have anxiety, stop, go somewhere alone and pray about it. And I guarantee you, you'll find peace. So with that being said, you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Have a good week moving forward. The weather's supposed to be beautiful here and I will talk to you guys really soon. Y'all take care.